That's a new splash screen. That's cool. I like that. All right. This is the XM803, which is a new 8.7 battle rating US tank. It's in the regular tech tree. It's uh, pretty much your standard... Standard um, XM. So it's not really... A, it's an MBT-70 with some slight differences to it. But. Sound is nice though. Let's take a look at the X-ray. X-ray? X-ray anybody? No? We don't wanna. Okay. I'm not sure what button I have for my X-ray on the dev server. I was pretty sure it's the same as my regular game, but apparently not. Let's see if we can get through the lower plate on this. Not quite. Probably can't get through here either, but we'll give it a shot. I haven't actually fired those missiles in a while. Okay, you can actually get through. How about that? Alright, let's see what kind of speed we get here. I'm not going to use the cruise control. We're just going to fly as fast as we can and see what kind of speed we get up to. Alright, let's steer to this distance. And then there we go. All right, what kind of speed can we get up to here, and what kind of acceleration? Now this is a stock vehicle. I could totally speed it out if I wanted, but I'm not going to do that yet, anyways. This looks like around 26 miles per hour, probably, which is all right, I guess. Yeah, turret traverse is not too bad. That is one tall remote machine gun, though. You're not going to hide this thing behind too many, too many things to still be able to shoot. Yeah, 26 miles an hour seems to be the cap. Okay. The ammo, obviously, is uh, your pretty standard M551, MBT-70 basic ammunition loadout. So not a lot of uh, not a lot of surprises in the stock ammo for the XM803. So that really shouldn't be anything new to anybody who's seen or driven. Those heat round effects though, that was pretty sweet. That's slightly new. Let's see if we can do anything good with the heat on the front of this T64A. I don't actually know, I don't know if I've used the heat rounds a whole lot in 1.77. Truth be told. Okay. Still ineffective there, but that's that was what I expected, so that's all right. Well, we know it should do pretty good damage to the side of him. I don't know about the side of his turret. Honestly, like I said, I haven't used the uh, dryer right there and see what happens. Yeah, it won't go through. That's what I suspected. Okay. Load missiles. Somehow, none of that ammo... None of the ammo crates got blown off the side of his turret from that round hitting him. Or from a Shillelagh missile hitting him. So that's kind of hilarious. So we'll just put one more into him and then we'll go drive something else. Alright. Here's the XM803. Alright, I'm going to uh, check my controls real quick and just get my x-ray figured out. And we'll take a look at the x-ray of this little baby here. So where the heck is... Um... Oh yeah, this thing should have suspension. Alright, we'll check the suspension too. I forgot about the suspension. I never think of the suspension. It's partially my fault and partially just I, I don't find it to be that particularly useful. Okay. Um, where is the... Is that a miscellaneous? That should be common. 
There we go. Yeah, it's my alt button. Are we not able to see? Maybe we're just not able to see the vehicle. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now it's working. I don't know why it wasn't working before. Look at all. Look at that ammo rack across the back of the turret. My goodness. And there's a few down inside. Let's see. I assume that... Okay, the ones down in the hull do not turn. None of the ones in the hull turn. So that's good to know. So you've got a big fuel tank and with ammo directly behind it right in the front. And then you've got some ammo right there. Let's see. If the turret is in its normal position and you're going to shoot at them, the ammo... The ammo is directly below that machine gun. So the big rooftop gun, aim directly below that, and you should hit the ammo that's in the floor there. Otherwise, of course, aim for the back of the turret bustle, and you probably are going to hit ammo, because that should be all the ready ammo. So there you go. There's your x-ray for your ammo and your fuel tanks and your crew members. So if you can get through the front of this thing, you're going to damage that fuel tank and probably hit the ammo. So if you can pen them through the front or from directly in the back, you're probably going to do a significant amount of damage to them. So there you go. All right. Reverse test for the XM803 that I forgot to do previously with the XM803. Let's see what kind of speed we can get up to and how quickly. Pretty good reverse speed. Not Obviously, it's not fully accelerating quickly because it's a totally stock tank, but 27 miles per hour in reverse is uh, nothing to sneeze at. That baby's moving. And can you fire directly over your engine deck? Uh, it doesn't look like it. All right, so this is the XM1 GM model. So you can get it if you're a computer PC player rather than an Xbox One player. So that's quiet, which means the engine is not a jet turbine. And nope, it's definitely quieter. So we got that going for us. Okay, we've got the uh, regular uh, M735 APF SDS round, which this thing is spaded, so it shouldn't be that inaccurate. But let's see. Uh, that's a little better. Oh, that's a T64 BV now up there in the uh, with the bolt-on ERA. That's kind of interesting. Right, we'll drop a little bit lower and then I'm gonna test all the uh, ammo here okay well we're gonna test the ammo on the IT one what I want to do is we'll we'll hit him with the 735 we know that's gonna kill him and then we're gonna switch over to the hash and I want to see if hash is any more effective like it's supposed to be in 1.79 here so we'll check that with this real quick Okay, seems to work. Let's get a range estimate on this guy. 600. Well, that seems like it's doing a little bit more damage than it has been. Alright, trying to hit him trying to hit him on the upper front plate just to see what kind of falling I can get there and it doesn't matter how high I adjust the ammo apparently it's just the aim I'm just gonna keep hitting his lower no matter what <laughs> until eventually it's like oh you want to shoot higher okay here here's much higher there we go can you guys hear me better now over the uh, in-game sounds I hope all right, let's get a speed test on this baby, and then let's see how heat FS is. This time I'm gonna use the cruise control. All right, we'll just dump this round off. I'm gonna switch over to smoke to see what the drop is like on the smoke. Actually, it seems pretty good for the smoke. Smoke rounds seem pretty decent. Yeah, smoke rounds have pretty good speed. Okay, we'll do a mobility test with heat FS. Pretty stable. Beautiful. Nailed that tree, just like I just like I aimed. Try that again. Oh, come on! Unbelievable! I have got the best aim ever. There we go. That's better. Okay, back over to the APF SDS. 
That is one stable turret, gang. That is one stable turret and gun. Yeah. All right, and uh, we'll kick back over to Hap. For all you Hap cats out there, we're gonna hit a moving shot on the ZSU 23-4. Oh, almost. He stopped and placed the turn. Just barely shot it past him. All right, let's just uh, keep climbing forward here. Do svidanya, tovarish. Okay, this time we'll see what kind of speed we can get. I'm actually we'll come to a stop first. I forgot to test the reverse speed in the XM803. I should have done that. But I'll throw that at the end of the XM803 part. I'm gonna turn all this into a video once I'm done. So the reverse speed is pretty swell for the XM1 GM. Let's see from a stop. Let's see how the acceleration is. Well, it's a premium, so it should be pretty good acceleration. We'll take a look at the... Well, I'm trying to take a look. There we go. Huh, apparently, while I'm holding W, I can't see the X-ray, so that's what the issue is with the X-ray. If I turn on the X-ray and then accelerate forward, the X-ray goes away. So I'm not sure what that kind of bug is. But that explains why it wasn't working at first with the XM803. Oh, right. Sorry. I was expecting the uh, APDS... APFSDS there, not the Ash. Should have realized from the uh, grid lines. Speed seems pretty good. Pretty mobile in a forward, forward speed. And of course, I'm shooting Hesh at uh, ERA blocks, but I want to see how many of them survive. <laughs> All right, I guess the answer is zero. That hit an ERA block, and the explosion all deflected downwards into the tank, which I did not expect, but uh, I guess if you guys can reproduce that shot from that angle at a T-64 BV that's not expecting you, and with your Hesh ammo, you uh, apparently can kill him. That's kind of hilarious. I did not expect that to happen. Well, let's check the reload rate, which actually kind of doesn't matter. Well, no. It kind of matters, but it's going to be dependent on your crew, so the reload rate's not really as important. Smoke is your pretty standard smoke. It does fly pretty fast, though, and flat, so... You can project smoke out pretty far to uh, cover your teammates capturing or repairing or to mess with your enemies and their vision. You can actually put smoke out there pretty far. So that's kind of nice. Alright, uh, let's check out the old x-ray. So we've got, yep, ready ammo racks up in the turret, just like the regular M1. Pretty decent amount of ammo in the side of the turret there. And fuel and uh, ammo in the side of the hull. Left side as you're looking at it. Right side of the tank proper. And, uh, yeah. There you go. Four crew members and pretty standard crew member configuration. So there you have your x-ray. And it's got pretty darn good reverse speed. And uh, the turret is really stable and the turret rotation is pretty dang good. So don't think you'll have too much trouble accomplishing some research with this thing. Well, that should do it for the XM1 GM. All right, just a quick test to see if you can fire directly behind you with the XM1 GM. Sure looks like you can. Essentially, pretty close right behind you. Not not directly behind you, but that's pretty good. That's much better than the uh, other tanks of a similar layout on the American tree where uh, the engine deck is significantly raised. So you don't have gun depression behind you, essentially, but you can pretty much fire flat and level. So that's a... Uh, important important part of the XM1 GM I would say so there you go all right so we've got the P40 F10 with a pretty snazzy paint job it's actually kind of neat looking and uh, not really 
whole lot going on with the x-ray from it, but there you go. Let's see how it takes off in a stock config. Pretty decent new sounds. Rudder's got pretty good authority. See what kind of, I'm just gonna let it go and see, okay. Tail wheel comes up pretty early. Let's see what kind of speed it wants to try and take off on its own. Uh, there we go. I'm sure you could get airborne at about 130 or so. Alright, let's see what kind of climb rate we can get with a stock plane. Yeah, I'm starting to lose speed there a little bit. So it's not going to be the world's best climber, but that should be kind of to be expected with any P40, really. Well, it shouldn't be too bad. It should be pretty snappy in a dive, I bet. Not that this is the world's best altitude for the dive test, but pick it up speed in a hurry, on the, even off that shallow little dive. Let's go take a buzz over Hawaii here. All right, roll rate is all right. Elevator up, elevator down is okay. The yaw is, wow, the yaw is really good. Now let's give her the old machine gun test, shall we? Oh, those sounds are great. Let's see what they sound like from inside the cockpit. That's pretty sweet. Not gonna lie, the new machine gun sounds are pretty decent. That's pretty, pretty awesome. Not too bad, gang, not too bad at all. <laughs> I like the new machine gun sounds. That's pretty great. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Make a gun run on our vehicle target here and then we'll move on to the next should be moving on to the next nation now. Should be it for the US for 1.79, besides uh, the Xbox One exclusive tank, which I don't have access to, so sorry. There we go. There you have the P40F. P40 fans, rejoice. All right, this is the F4JB, which is a Navy version of, late Navy version of uh, the end of the development of the F86 Sabre line. And as you can see, I've got six hydropods on it, which total up to 114 hydro rockets. I spaded this one out just for the sake of having those 114 hydras because I want you guys to be able to see these. So let's take her up, shall we? Release and brakes. Here we go. She wants to take off. 
She wants to get airborne. She's trying. She really wants to get off the ground. There we go. Up we go. Let's get a look at her here. Interesting jet. It really looks like somebody took a regular aspect ratio picture of an F-86 and then squeezed it to be crunched in from the sides. It almost, it really reminds me of like an A7 or a F8 Corsair, which is really funny to me. All right, so it does not have an afterburner. So with the six rocket pods on it, the acceleration is not entirely not really mind-blowing but let's go uh, find a target and fire these rockets at it now we're gonna stall out <laughs> yep all right we'll just side slip it back over and uh, I know we're way too far out, but I want to fire off all these rockets, so we're going to start shooting them from here. <laughs> that is awesome. That is so awesome. We didn't even kill him. That's the new 20 mil cannon sounds. Now the cool thing with these rocket pods, like we've already seen in 1.77, is they've got aerodynamic fairings on them. And when you fire the first time, it blows the uh, ends off, which is kind of neat. So, anyway, there you go. Let's see how the air brakes work. Air brake's actually pretty good. We'll try and put her down on the carrier just because I can. Okay, I have to get the speed down a little bit further. There's our friend the carrier. Oh boy. Up, 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 up. <laughs> it's been a long time since I landed on a carrier, much less with a jet, so this might be sporty. Oh, no, no, that was not what I wanted. Alright, let's see if we can put her down. Well, that wasn't too bad. Not my best carrier landing, but wow, those landing flaps are almost vertical. See if we can fire the rockets off the deck. We'll give the carrier crew a little show here. <laughs> That's so great. All right, so uh, since it let me retake off here, Watch the uh, fairings on the rocket pods if you've never seen it happen on like uh, any of the French planes that have these rocket pods in 1.77. So it blows the front and the back off. And they fall away. Pretty neat. And then you can actually see the rockets that fire. You can actually see the rockets emptying out of the pods. If you look down the rocket pod there on the left, you can actually see the through the hole. There we go. That's it for the new U.S. jet fighter.
All right. <laughs> I feel bad for poor Hans there sticking his head up out of the turret. Interestingly, that's uh, it's not a rotatable gun, so we'll have to watch out for that. And it only fires APCR rounds, but the reload's not too bad. It'll go through the T26. It might have a little bit of a problem with the T-34 from this distance, but it is shooting pretty flat. Man, yeah. We are uh, not going to get through the side of a T-34, so... Odds are you won't see too many T-34s in this thing unless you take it into super high tiers to try and troll people, but that's kind of... Do that at your own risk. It does have large rearview mirrors, which is kind of funny. And they actually sort of work. Let's see how the speed ends up here. Free elevation type on. I don't know if that means there's a stabilizer or what. Presumably that's something to do with the stabilizer. I don't actually know what that means. I didn't read anything about that. Looks like 22, 23 miles an hour is going to be the upper limit. Let's see if we can get through the side of a T-34 at point-blank range. I don't actually... I'm not actually sure what the... Yeah? Well, you can get... You can damage it at point-blank. We'll just back it up a little bit and see where the 20 mil APCR rounds start to become ineffective. Oops. We're going to have to do it quickly. We set them on fire. Alright, so you got to get in pretty close on a T-34, but... You can hurt him. Alright, well, that took the crew out. So anyway... It shoots pretty flat, that's for sure. I'm gonna guess we probably can't do much. It's like all wheeled vehicles in this game, though. It's a little hard to keep it steering. I'm gonna guess we can't really hurt a T-44 from too far away. That actually got through. So you can actually hurt a T-44 from... Pretty f Actually, you can hurt a T-44 from kind of far away. That's curious. But that one didn't go through, so now I, re I don't know. <laughs> so it's kind of a crapshoot on whether or not you can get through them from the side. Some of them are bouncing, some of them are going through. But you can get through the side of a T-44 from... Uh, how far are we? About 600? 300. Okay. I'm a little off my estimation. So get within 300 yards of a T-44 and you can uh, set him on fire through the side of his lower hull armor with this thing. So that's kind of funny. Let's see if you can actually see the mirrors. Uh, well, the mirrors don't really help you, but you can see them out of the driver's, driver's viewport, so that's kind of funny. All right, let's uh, set this thing up for a speed run, and we'll do an x-ray on it, see what she looks like from the inside. Well, it looks like a German driving, and a German standing up with a 20 mil cannon. So I'm kind of surprised that he can reload as quickly as he can, because honestly, if it's a single-shot gun, and he's got to reach down and grab a new 20 mil round, even though 20 mil rounds aren't, like, particularly big and heavy, it should be kind of a pain in the butt for him to keep reaching down there and grabbing them and reloading them, so... His reload rate's probably better than it should be, but we won't complain about that too much for a 20 mil cannon at at uh, 1.3 battle rating where this is. I do find it rather humorous that we can uh, test drive and test fire against a T-10, so we'll go do that. Or wait. No, it's a T-10. Shockingly, it doesn't seem that we can do too much damage to a T-10. See if we can get him from point blank side. My guess is no. <laughs> All right, we'll try directly from the back of the engine. And I'm still guessing that even if we drive right up and ram him, we probably can't get through a T10. But it'd be really funny if we can. God, the steering on wheeled vehicles in this game is crazy. Ah, it doesn't look like we're probably going to be able to get through.
can't even you can just barely aim low enough. No, nope, can't get through even at the most point blank range that there is. I'll see if I can get under the hull armor. The lower hull armor, but I bet by the time I can get the gun depression to aim low enough that probably won't be able to go through there either. Guessing we probably have no chance on a T10 with this thing. I would suspect there's not going to be too many ways you control a T10 driver with this. I mean, you can shoot him in the gun barrel, but I don't think there's much else you could probably do to a T10. So, I wouldn't recommend trying to take this thing in and troll T10 drivers at a maximum tier, maximum up tier. I don't think you can get through the. Uh, let's see if we can get through the driver's viewport. It's even bouncing off the driver's viewport glass, so I would say don't bother trying to troll with this thing in the highest tiers. I don't know. You could test it out against different vehicles, maybe. I'm sure you could damage, like, an M163 or a ZSU-234 probably with it. But I wouldn't expect you could probably do too much trolling with a 20mm gun at a maximum battle rating, so... Anyway... That should, uh, we'll do a reverse speed test, and, uh, we'll call it good after that. Reverse speed's probably not going to be fantastic, because it's a pretty early war German design. And, yeah, looks like you're limited to about 7 miles an hour in reverse, so. Oh, you should also be pretty vulnerable to over-the-top machine gun attacks, but that's pretty much going to go for any armored car. But that's, particularly in this one, because that's an open, almost an open top. So there you go. All right, for a more realistic high-tier trolling, let's see if we can do anything to this big boy from directly behind him. And the answer is, yes, you can. So you can at least take it into 4.3 and get through a KV-2 pretty easily. Let's see uh, what kind of distance we can actually get through a KV-2. getting through right here. Alright, got through right there, so might have just been an armored spot that I hit. Yeah, still getting through. Not causing any fires or anything. Still getting through. Still getting through. There we go. Got him on fire. Let's see if we can get through the turret. I imagine we still could. Yeah. Alright, so the back side, if you can get behind a KV-2, you should be able to take him out from a reasonable distance pretty easily. And from the sides, you should be, uh, you should be able to get through the uh, sides of the turret, I would expect, pretty easily as well. So yeah, you got a pretty good distance that you can uh, get through a KV-2. I think that's probably enough time spent on the uh, SD KFC 221 here, so well, let's move on. Okay. The Leopard 2A4. Look at that turret rotation speed. Let's take a look at the x-ray right from the start here before we start driving. Large ammo storage right behind the loader. Larger ammo storage right in front of the loader to the side of the driver. Fuel tanks seem to be integral with the hull more than uh, and a little right next to the engine. So you don't have any fuel tanks right off the front. Which means the driver is pretty much totally unprotected besides the armor. So you'll probably lose your driver in this fairly often. But let's see how the uh, Super Pen Heat FS does against the T-64 BV. One of these days I'm going to remember what the range is on that. And it'll actually fly at the range I've got it at. So it didn't detonate, it deflected off the <laughs> ERA blocks. There we go. You can get through on the second shot, which you won't get against the T-64B, but... Alright, let's see what kind of speed we got. Not gonna use cruise control, just regular acceleration. Oh, 
Now the tank is a little bit heavier and has a bit more armor protection than the uh, Leopards before it, so it is a little bit slower in the top speed and the acceleration, but it's still pretty fast. I wouldn't be too concerned with its speed. Let's check out the gun stabilization. Uh, it's not too bad. Excuse me. It's actually not crazy responsive on the steering like I expected. Let's get it back up to speed again and I'll do a little bit of a turn test because I expected it to react a little better than it did right there. Interesting. Alright, let's try turning again. Yeah, the turn's actually... It's a little sluggish turning. I didn't expect that. God, those rounds are crazy. shot into him and we'll test the reverse speed reverse speed is uh, only 19 so it's not terrible it'll get you out of trouble but it's not it's not crazy fast it's not slow it's just it's more kind of average for a tier 6 better than the Soviets anyway so it's got that going for it And as far as shooting directly over your back, no problem. You've almost got gun depression off the back deck. So you'll be able to shoot behind you without any issue. Alright. That pretty much wraps it up for the Leopard 2A4. The uh, DM-23 round, which is the upgraded APF-SDS, after you get the DM-13, which is the first APF-SDS you can get, has about 20 millimeters more penetration over 2,000 meters than the DM-13 does. So, at max range, 2 kilometers, you do 20 millimeters more penetration with the upgraded APF-SDS over the basic APF-SDS. So, both unlocks. The second one is better, but it's not a world, a world leap forward in uh, advance. But it's still better. So, there you go. Leopard 2A4. All right, this is the BF-110 F2. See how she looks in a takeoff. This thing has got one impressive extra modification weapon loadout. From a whole bunch of variety of bombs to uh, cannon pods to 12 rockets that don't have a lot of penetration but look like they have a lot of explosive power, so that should be pretty interesting. Yeah, let's take her airborne and see what she's got. Well, she doesn't like to uh, get slowed down by her brakes at all, that's for sure. Give her a little gun test here. Ah, oh, the new gun sounds are sweet. Yeah, she got airborne pretty quick. Bring up the gear and the flaps, let's see what she can do. Alright, what kind of maneuverability we're playing with here. Eh, roll rate's not bad for a twin engine heavy fighter, honestly. Let's see what kind of climb rate we get in the stock bird. Not too bad, I kind of like the uh, camo pattern on it. Got a tail gunner, so that's not bad. Alright, let's roll her around. We'll go in for an attack on the ground vehicle. There she is. And uh, get a feel for the new sounds and the new cannons. Well, the new sounds for the cannons. They're not new cannons, but... We'll do a uh, tail gunner. Let's see what the tail gunner sounds like. Kind of sweet. Let's see what the weapons sound like from inside the cockpit. 
Not too bad. And as far as guns from the outside, machine guns and cannons. Not too bad. Should be a pretty fun airplane to take out. Should do pretty well against uh, most everything except most likely the average Spitfire you're going to run into will probably give you a lot of trouble, but should be alright. You got a tail gun, so that's not all bad. And the engine power is not terrible, although you're going to overheat quickly in a stock bird, so I guess watch out for that. But there you go. BF 110 F2. And next up will be the BF 110 G2. All right, so this is the BF 110 G2, and uh, it's pretty different from the 110 F2. Interesting. It's got two separate sets of cannons. I didn't actually notice. So I'm gonna have to check that out and just verify what the cannons are. The uh, tail gunners also got double tail guns, so that's pretty sweet. Now, as far as the extra add-on ammo uh, unlock modifications you can get for the G2. There's a couple significant upgrades over the F2. You can get a 37 millimeter board cannon, which has 66 rounds of ammo in it, and I imagine has anti-tank HVAP ammo. Also, you can get four of the 210 millimeter rockets, so anti-air and anti-tank capability on this thing is gonna be really good. Particularly with uh, one of the bomb loadouts is a 1,000 kilo bomb and uh, two 250 kilo bombs so you are going to do some serious ground pounding in this thing and probably be able to significantly damage enemy bomber formations and uh, go after bases even if you want to check the uh, tail guns here for the tail gunner that should be a little scary for some fighter pilots out there all right let's take this baby airborne Heavy fighter lovers rejoice. You guys are going to have a good time with this thing. These are going to be scary, scary when they're fully modded out. Somebody who's a competent heavy fighter pilot flying a fully spaded out BF 110 G2, it's going to be a nightmare. make our strafing run. We'll check out the roll rate and stuff as we line up on the vehicle over here. It's probably not going to be quite as good. But again, heavy fighter. It's actually, the roll rate's not terrible for a heavy fighter. The yaw is pretty good like it normally is in War Thunder and the elevator authority is not too bad actually. interesting with dual cannons on the nose. Well, dual sets of dual cannons is what I meant. Four, four cannons in the nose instead of uh, four machine guns and two cannons. Let's see, let's compare the overheat speed for the cannons here. So here's the cannon one. 20 millimeters and cannon two I'm actually I'll have to check and double what they are double check what they are <laughs> beautiful yep and uh, of course in a stock config your engines are gonna overheat quickly but that's pretty common across just about anything stock aircraft wise so we'll take her under the bridge here and then that'll be good for the BF 110 G2 I am looking forward to flying this thing let me tell you Whee! 
That'll do for the BF110 GT, gang. This bird is going to be lots of fun. And here we have one of the more interesting premiums yet to come out of War Thunder. The BF 109's Villing. With a pretty interesting landing gear. So you might actually be able to survive some crash landings. Or getting gear damage here and still be able to land. So that's kind of neat. Now you'll be left cockpit only. Because the right cockpit is covered over. But a pair of 109's with four MK-103 cannons. So... Yeah, that's going to be super dangerous. I would not probably recommend going head-on against one of these if you can help it. Although, in a tail chase against a bomber or something, you might have a little difficulty concentrating your ammo. We'll let this reload, and then we will uh, get airborne. She wants to get airborne in a hurry. You put up the engine power and this thing takes off. Oh yeah, she wants to get airborne. This thing does not want to be on the ground. Oh my god. Wow, that's really quiet. What is... Oh, I realize what that is now. Okay, it's like a hole in the canopy glass. Interesting. Well, your view is somewhat obscured to the right, so someone could approach you from the right, especially from the right and below. And it'd be pretty tough to detect that, so you guys who fly this thing in Simulator, if it's ever available in Simulator, which I kind of doubt, or even in RB, you'd still be able to see him coming probably a little better in RB, but if you fly in uh, cockpit view, watch out for that. That's going to be dangerous. Let's see what the cannons sound like from inside the cockpit. Not too bad. Let's see what they sound like from outside. Yeah, so the MK-108s have a new sound. And, uh, it sounds pretty good. So, 180 loop isn't gonna happen too quickly. Roll rate shouldn't be that great either for a big twin boom aircraft like this. But I'd say it's actually kind of acceptable. That's not too bad for a roll rate. And yeah, yaw authority is always good in War Thunder, pretty much no matter what you're flying. Unless you're in uh, turns with a 190 or some heavy aircraft, the rudder starts getting a little tough. But uh, elevator's not bad. I don't know, I imagine it's gonna have compression. But let's see about the cannons and a ground attack here. lower velocity. Alright. Not the world's largest ammo load, but you shouldn't need too much with four MK-108s. So, there you go. There's the bf 109s Willing, which is a premium for Germany, coming out in 1.79. Interesting bird. Interesting concept. I mean, the concept's not new to War Thunder, because we've got the, uh, F-82, but it's an interesting concept for World War II for a twin-engine interceptor. Kind of neat. So, we've got us a Fritz X. Steerable glide bomb, really, is what it is. Um, which is a new modification available for the HE-111H6. And possibly other aircraft. I will double check that and put a note on the screen if it's anything besides this plane. And let's see what that looks like. Pretty interesting uh, large size bomb there, that's for sure. We'll see if we can uh, steer it onto the truck target. 
This will be the first time I've actually tried this thing, so I really, I don't know how it's going to actually work. I may have to play with it a little bit and figure it out and then come back and uh, do a separate part of the video here. But we'll see what happens. Already overheating the oil in my 111, which is otherwise spaded. Well, it is spaded with the, uh, it's completely spaded here and we're overheating the oil just after takeoff. So thank goodness for air spawns, I guess. All right, we'll try and uh, get some altitude here and then make a drop on this guy. I don't know if my engines are going to hold out that long. Target and see what happens. All right, not exactly a lot of altitude here, but let's see how it goes. Interesting. Neat. Uh, I am not sure I am not actually sure what I was doing there except apparently flying the airplane instead of the bombs so where the heck did it hit? Okay, I'm going to have to uh, take another pass at that, I guess. Interesting. Let's try this again. I'm not actually sure what the bomb controls are for sure for steering the bomb. I'm going to try just dropping it normal and not making any inputs and see where it hits. I'm just going to let it go. I'm not making any corrective action at all here to it. I think it's penetrating below the surface and blowing up. That's really interesting. I didn't pay attention to what everybody said about how you steer the thing in uh, people's YouTube videos and stuff, so I actually... I'm going to check the controls real quick and see if there's something I'm missing. Oh god, it's not this, is it? You can... Whoa, you can fire salvos of rockets now? <gasps> no way. Well, that's interesting. I'm going to have to try that with the FJ-4 again now. Alright, one more bomb drop. Let's see if it's the alt buttons. Yep, 
Yep. Okay, it's those controls. It's the Alt... Alt WASD is how you steer the bomb. Very interesting. And it definitely looks like it's... going underwater before it explodes underground, so... Okay, so uh, the default controls are Alt plus WASD to steer the bomb after you drop the Fritz X bomb, so. Okay. So you can see the three places where the bombs have hit. <laughs> Put a little extra stress on the airframe there, I think. So that's where one bomb hit, and that's where another bomb hit, and that's where the third one went. The ones that I just dropped by themselves, they just, they were steering, but I wasn't putting any steering inputs in, so it'd be really interesting to see how the uh, actual steering works, and uh, see when I actually get good at controlling it, because right now it's way off. So I'll make one last pass and see if I can actually get a hit with the thing, and see if it even explodes if I make it close to the uh, truck. Because for right now, the bombs look like they're going deep underground and then not actually doing anything. pretty close and still nothing so I don't know if the Fritz X just isn't gonna do a lot of damage to ground things or what but um, whoops I'm not sure how much closer I can really bring this thing in on the target there I'll just have to figure out where it's hitting compared to the offset I guess but, uh, anyway, the Fritz X is a new, new thing for the, uh, Germans, and apparently it'll take a little bit of practice, but there you have it anyway. It's at least available for the HE111 H6, and I'll figure out if it's available for anything else, and leave a note on the screen. And we'll see you guys in, uh, the next nation, which is the Soviet Union. Okay, so moving on to the glorious Soviet Union, we've got the T-62M1, which has got a significantly different looking turret and hull than the basic T-62. So it's an interesting change. You should be able to shoot behind you. It looks like it's actually got some gun depression, so hey, what have we been waiting for? Finally, some gun depression for the Soviets. And it's got an interesting um, upgrade path for the ammunition. Uh, you've got a basic APF SDS round that you can upgrade with a heat FS round, a, a an ATGM launched out of the gun barrel, and a better APF SDS round, which has a pretty significant upgrade in penetration over uh, all ranges. So, turret rotation isn't too bad. Shot just passed him. Reload is a little bit slow, but that's kind of the same as the original T62. Shouldn't have any trouble at all with that leopard right there, so I'm going to try for the Abrams again. Pull just a little low. Okay, speed-wise, stock T62M1 is not really that fast in the uh, acceleration or top speed department, but it doesn't really need to be. You're not going to beat a lot of people to those really choice spots, but it's not too bad of a tank. That went right on through. Okay. So forward speed seems to max out at about uh, 20 miles an hour. Let's check out reverse and see if we got anything better than your standard Soviet reverse. Looks like a big negatron on that one. And another upgrade that's kind of interesting is uh, side skirts like the T-64A. So you might confuse some people into thinking you're a T-64A, which I don't know if that really benefits you or doesn't benefit you. 
in a T62. So yeah, reverse, not, not your friend. Uh, let's see what the x-ray looks like. So pretty standard Soviet crew compartment, uh, pretty standard fuel and wet ammo storage up in the front right side of the tank, and uh, one shell, one shell behind the loader. So that's interesting. That's it. There's just one shell up in the turret. There's probably more than that besides before, but I started shooting, so I bet you there's more. There's probably three or four up behind them. So there you have the T62M1. Interesting, interesting new tank available for the Soviets. So here we have a new modification for the T64B, which is the T64BV, and that is added on explosive reactive armor panels for the T64B. So I should have taken off my uh, um, bushes there, but you, you get the idea. They're over the front of the hull, on the sides of the hull, and on the front oblique angles on the turret. So you get some extra modification explosive reactive armor upgrades for the T-64B in 1.79. So there you go. They won't do much for you against APFSDS rounds, and I don't know if they'll save you against the Churchill AVRE, or the, sorry, the Centurion AVRE, not Churchill. I don't know if they'll save you against the hash rounds on that, but probably at least the first one. I imagine they'll at least stop the first impact. And then you'll probably be able to shoot him before he can ever reload. So be careful, but I don't think you have too much to fear. So that's uh, another upgrade. And technically, it's not a new vehicle, but it's going to make it like it's a new vehicle for the T-64B. So the Soviets get a new version of the IL-28, which is the IL-28SH. One of the modifications you can get is one heck of a lot of rockets. 192 rockets, in fact. They're relatively fast velocity rockets. Um, you also can get six much bigger, much more dangerous rockets. And there looks like a rocket-assisted uh, takeoff as well underneath there. So let's see what this baby can do. Now, this is not a completely stock test flight because I had to unlock the rockets but one thing I'm going to test real quick is my rocket salvo button nope okay uh, well while we wait to reload I'm going to change my controls to see if I can set up a different button for the rocket salvo and see if it'll actually fire off more than one rocket at a button press and then we'll take off after the plane reloads We'll just replace. There we go. Yeah, that'll work. Oh my god. So let's take this monstrosity airborne, shall we? And yes, the rocket salvo button, I'm not sure if that's a new thing in the controls or something that I just haven't seen up until now. But the rocket salvo button is a thing that works and you are no longer limited to having to rapid press the rockets as fast as you can to fire them off for airplanes that have a lot of rockets like the Sky Raider or this IL-28 or even ones that just have like six or eight rockets that you just want to pickle them all off as fast as possible. And I'll show you that in just a second. Because that is pretty hilarious. I forgot to check and see what my uh, rocket booster button is. I don't actually know what I set it to. All right, where's the ground target here? Is there a ground target here? There might not be one here. All right. Well, we'll just make a rocket run on some ships.
Okay, so ordinarily when you fire the rockets, and like I said, this may not be a new thing for 1.79, but it's new to me. So anyway, if you guys have missed this button, or it is new, like I missed it, ordinarily you press your rocket fire button and you get two rockets fired off. But there's a new button right below fire rocket, and that's fire a rocket salvo. Well, it's new to me, anyway. And uh, <laughs> this is what happens if you press and hold that. Look at this! Oh my god, I'm in love. That is absolutely amazing. And I wonder just how many airplanes are going to try and go head-on with an IL-28 and not realize that it's carrying all the rocket pods until it's way, way, way too late and get hit by 192 rockets coming in in a head-on configuration because this is absolutely hilarious and as soon as these reload I'll make a uh, a ripple fire ground strike attack and uh, that's just that's hilarious to me I love airplanes with a lot of rockets well the high velocity rockets is even better and uh, 192 is just an insane number of ground attack or air-to-air -air attack rockets because really with 192 of these things, you could pretty much use them as tracer fire and fire them at enemy airplanes. This is downright hilarious. All right. Oh my god. There we go. So it may not have done a lot of damage, but oh my god, is that funny. And the uh, new sounds for the cannons also apply to the Soviets. Pretty sweet. Pretty good sounding guns, I think. I think that's an improvement to the cannon sounds right there. And the other sound you heard was a Twitch subscriber, not the cannons, so. All right, well that'll do for the IL-28SH. This should be a very interesting aircraft to encounter in the air and uh, quite an interesting aircraft to use for uh, both air and tank battles because, oh my God, that is so many rockets and you can salvo the rockets off. What an upgrade. Apparently, you can't see the rockets explode. Ah, well, anyway, this thing is going to be a lot of fun. So, Britain gets a low tier, hey, look at that, a low tier SPAA with four 792 machine guns on board, and apparently it's got radar, so that's funny. Um, or they just did that for the test drive. But it's the. Mark 6A, AAA, and uh, it's a pretty low tier, pretty low battle rating, tier 1 SPAA. But it's got four 792 machine guns, which isn't a terrible volume of fire. So, uh, not too bad. They don't really seem to want to overheat, so that's nice. And uh, that's a, quite a lot of ammunition on board. Let's see what kind of speed it gets up to. That thing is just downright hilarious. All right, we'll put the cruise control on. We'll take a look at the X-ray. Very reminiscent of the SD KFZ 221, actually. As far as one driver and one dude standing up. All right, let's see what kind of 
tracking speed we've got. Huh. Well, the reload isn't too bad, and uh, 900 rounds of ammunition is pretty good, although... 792 ammo is not going to do much against most tanks that you're going to encounter. So you're going to want to be careful with it because, as you can see, even against the relatively low tier Panzer IIs, you're not going to do much damage to them in this. So you're going to want to pretty much be uh, avoiding tank engagements and watching out for enemy aircraft, which you should be able to do pretty good damage against, particularly if they come in on a strafing run. Because you got a pretty decent volume of fire. It's just not a very heavy round that you're firing out of this thing. So, Let's see if we can finish the BF-110 this time as he comes towards us. Not doing too much to him. Messing up his engines a lot, but no uh, incendiary kind of effect. Apparently we're blowing parts off of him. So that's it. Like I said, not a really not a really heavy, powerful round that we're firing, and this is the stock ammunition too. So while it looks like he's certainly gonna have to run back to base or crash if he were a real player, he might actually crash here anyway. I've probably done enough damage to his engines now that he's probably losing engine power. It certainly looks like he's dropping in altitude, so. With uh, stock ammunition, you might have a little bit of trouble, but uh, you can certainly take out unarmored enemy vehicles like other low-tier SPAA open-top things, no problem. And you should be able to do enough damage to most aircraft that you're going to encounter with this to upgrade your ammo belt pretty quickly. But uh, speed-wise, it's not too bad. 21 miles an hour isn't terrible. Let's see what kind of reverse speed it gets which I imagine is not going to be good, and uh, is pretty predictably low-tier British. Reverse is just for parking it, because you never retreat. And uh, let's see if we can even hurt the barrel on this Panther. Probably not, and honestly, that's pretty accurate that we shouldn't be able to do much damage with just 792 rounds to the steel of the gun barrel. It really shouldn't do anything to it. So there you go. There's the Mark 6A SPAA for the United Kingdom, which is a battle or a 1.3 battle rating tier one uh, mobile anti-aircraft vehicle. It's a very interesting little design, and um, I don't think it's got very much chance of surviving too many hits from the APC BC rounds that your enemies are likely to be firing at uh, this thing's battle rating. But anyway, there you have it. So Britain's premium for 1.79 is the Centurion Mark V AVRE with a 165 millimeter, almost spigot gun mortar on the front of it, uh, firing Hesh only, and it's a 31 kilogram round, so your reload's going to be a little bit slow, but it's got the most explosive mass out of any Hesh round in the game, apparently. It is a premium, so it comes fully upgraded, so we've got smoke dischargers and artillery, and uh, it's got the mine clearing plow on the front, which should function somewhat like space armor, and it's got some uh, explosive reactive armor panels on the front of it, too, and uh, you might survive some hits in this thing, and you might even deal out some damage with the Hesh rounds, but let's see what the drop looks like on them. Oh my god, look at the drop. Alright, uh, let's get our good range find on this guy. Not a lot of zoom. Not a lot of zoom at all. 700. Alright, we're going to have to... Okay, I guess I don't have a... Oh man. That should be close to it right there. <laughs> oh god oh man that is going to be funny we're gonna try a frontal hit on the IT-1 which should hopefully kill him in one shot and uh, then we'll move on 
and see what the driving is like in this thing. All right, 250. We don't want to miss there. That is that has got some drop on it, but it looks like it might be somewhat effective with some hits. Let's see what kind of speed we can hope for out of this baby right here. Probably not much better than 20 miles an hour. That's pretty much the Centurion family's max speed. Somewhere between 21 to 23 miles an hour. Looks like probably 21. So we'll kick the cruise control on. We'll take a look at the x-ray. There you go for the ammo. All down in the... All down in the basement, in the floor. With a couple ready rounds. Right next to the loader. Let's see what she looks like on the move. There is not a stabilizer, which shouldn't really be a surprise. And you'd think maybe that would start a fire, but uh, it doesn't really make that much sense for it to start a fire because of the way the hash rounds work. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a hit on the ZSU-23-4 from this far away, which I imagine is going to be hilariously... A fail. Well, I actually damaged him. I almost, almost might have hit. I actually overshot him. I might have been closer if he didn't turn, but I don't think I would have hit him because he was uh, turning back towards me there. So, anyway, um, not a particularly fast tank. The battle rating is all right. Your gun should be capable of doing some pretty significant damage to some some of the enemies you're likely to see, although I'm not confident that you're gonna get one hit kills. It just, Hesh just still doesn't make one hit kills here, so. I don't know. Hesh against the frontal armor of something should probably inflict more damage than that, in my opinion, but. I don't know. If you don't if you don't cripple something's gunner or gun breach or gun barrel, then you might as well just kiss yourself goodbye at the, the battle rating you're gonna be fighting at here. So I mean like right there. Unless that T ten was already repairing his gun breach, he's just gonna turn and utter utterly destroy this thing. So I don't know. You may have some luck with uh, protecting your lower hull with the uh, the lower front plate at least won't be a vulnerability on this Centurion because of the plow, but that may be the biggest redeeming factor on the thing. The reload isn't the world's worst thing. It's certainly not the FE4005, and it's certainly in nowhere near the target that an FE4005 is. So... It may be a bit more survivable than uh, everything else that's hash only for Britain, but I I don't know. I don't know if I can recommend this thing or not. I'm going to get a test drive on it and do a first 10, so I'll be able to give you a better answer there. That was a completely accidental hit right there. I hit a bump and it brought my gun up from where I was going to actually shoot it. So I'm not going to lie, I was not trying to hit him right there, but that's interesting that it killed him. Anyway, there you have it for the... Uh, Centurion Mark V AVRE with the mine clearing plow and some ERA blocks and one heck of a large hash round or one with the most explosive power in it. And at least it gets artillery and smoke shells right off the bat. So it is a premium. It's got that going for it. I don't know if it has much else going for it though. That's a pretty fast radar. At battle rating 8.0 for Britain, we get a radar SPAA finally. And holy cow, tell me everyone isn't going to put a face on this thing immediately as soon as they unlock it. Uh, speaking of unlocks, I did kind of cheat in Golden Eagle this one a little bit because, oh, you only get 40 rounds of it. Okay, that makes more sense. So you get an APDS belt that I thought was crazy when I saw it and since it's nothing but HVAP T rounds, but it makes sense that you can only have 40 of them. So that actually makes a little bit of sense there. So we'll go use those up on uh, 
enemy tanks. And uh, then we'll switch over to the anti-air rounds and engage the air target overhead. Let's see what kind of speed this thing gets. It's actually not terribly fast. Although it is, after all, a chieftain hull for the chieftain marksman, so it's not really surprising that it's not terribly fast. But it's going to be really fun to run into an IT-1 and do that to it. That didn't do as much as I hoped. That is one wide angle of fire. There's something you're really going to have to keep in mind is the, uh, the spread of fire on this thing is actually kind of impressive. All right, let's find that air target and erase him. Oh my god! <laughs> bye bye. Do svidania, tovarish. All right. So, speed, not great. But uh, let's see how the x ray looks. So, there's your ammo. Uh, you can see if you shoot through the front of this thing, if you fire directly through the front of it, like dead center in the middle. You're probably not going to do significant damage to it. Maybe you might not even kill the entire crew with an APF SDS round. You hit this thing with uh, APCBC or even even probably the HE rounds from like the T64s. You'll probably kill it if you shoot it right up there in the center of the turret. But if you want to get a really for sure shot, you probably want to offset just slightly to one side of the center on either side, and you should hit the ammo runners there or you'll probably get some of the crew so with three crew members um unless it's tilted a little bit to the side and you can line up the gunner and uh, the driver or the commander and the driver you might not be able to kill this thing in one shot unless you get him through the side of the turret but anyway there you see what it looks like for the x-ray and of course like anything with a spinning radar on it you're not really going to hide very well because that motion of that spinning radar is just going to attract attention right to you. Now you may be able to camouflage that with some bushes on the front of the turret face here and have them point straight up. That's probably something you can do. But um, yeah, that radar is going to be uh, pretty hard for you to hide and uh, not get discovered by anybody trying to chase you down and look for you. So let's uh, take a peek at the old Chieftain Reverse here, which is probably going to be the same as any other Chieftain Reverse. Nicely, you can aim pretty low behind you, so that's nice, but uh, reverse speed, pretty standard, pretty standard chieftain. The guns do take a pretty darn long time to overheat, though, so you can put a pretty decent volume of fire up against enemy aircraft before your guns are going to overheat. Got a pretty long time that you can shoot. And uh, you can do some pretty significant damage to enemy SPAA. The enemy tank has been destroyed. So there you go. Chieftain Marksman. It does eventually get smoke, which will be nice. So very similar to the T-64 BV for the British is the Super Conqueror which is some extra add-on armor protection, which I did not have the chance to record video for, but I did get some screenshots at the end of my uh, dev server time here. I meant to go back later and get some video of it, but I wasn't able to, and the dev server was closed by the time I could get back on, so. Like I said, very similar to the T-64 BV, and here are some screenshots of what it looks like and where the armor panels are. And here we have a tank which a lot of people have been looking forward to, myself included, which I think is going to be a contender for best tank in the game when it releases. And that is the Japanese Type 90. Now, you see the two types of ammunition down at the bottom. The uh, APF SDS is a researchable modification. You don't get it stock, you just get the heat FS rounds. But i want to bring it in for the test drive because it's researchable in the first tier of mods which i think is crazy because it has got one heck of a lot of penetration so let's just uh test her out on this fella here 
Yeah, this is going to be a fun tank to drive. <laughs> That's going to be beautiful. All right, one more for the IAT-1, and then we'll switch over to the Heat FS rounds. Because that's what you actually get for the stock ammo. All right. Let's uh, take a peek at our x-ray here. A lot of ready rounds up behind the turret, in the back of the turret bustle, behind the gunner. A few directly behind the gunner. And uh, quite a bit wet storage in the fuel tank off to the right of the driver. Other than that... Pretty standard crew compartment, but only three crew members. So that's going to be something you want to watch out for when you're driving this thing. You do not want to take uh, too many hits through your turret. So that is, that's going to be a weakness for sure, is going to be the only three crew members. But let's see how she does in the speed realm. The only modification that I purchased for the test drive was the APF SDS round, so... All other things are stock for this tank, so all mobility and anything else, turret rotation, this is all how it'll come when you first unlock it. Turret rotation is actually a little bit slow. Let's see if we get uh, straight down the back gun depression. Yes, we do. Speed's pretty good. It's uh, very similar to a Leopard 2. Uh, the stock heat FS round may give you a little bit of trouble but your mobility is going to be pretty darn good in this thing and your survivability is going to be really good as well that's something that the test drive can't really show you is the survivability of the tank but the uh, type 90 should be pretty well defended against enemy fire not invincible not bulletproof but uh, there should be quite a few bounces off it that you survive of course, anybody can just hit you in the gun barrel, which is always going to be something that'll happen in War Thunder, but apart from that, you should be able to survive quite a few hits in this thing, I think. And, uh, deal out quite a few fatal hits yourself as well, so, uh, the Type 90 is, uh, going to be a very fun tank to drive, I think. I, myself, am very much looking forward to it. I don't know if it's going to be the first thing that I go for to personally grind and unlock, when 1.79 re re yeah, releases, but I am definitely going to have this up near the top of my uh, I want list for sure. So let's check the reverse speed, which I imagine is going to be pretty snappy. Oh my god, it's darn near whole reproduction. Which, by the way, apparently they are taking the whole reproduction's massive reverse speed away. So it'll be nice to still have that kind of speed available in this thing. Although it doesn't quite reach the whole reproduction. But it's pretty good reverse speed still. You can get yourself away down the road from any threats coming up at you pretty quickly if you're damaged and need to get back around behind some cover. So... There you have it, the Japanese Type 90, a brand new 9.7 battle rating, so maximum battle rating tank for Japan, and I think Japan's going to be a contender for having the best tank in the game here once 1.79 releases, and it will be this thing right here. I could be wrong, but uh, I'm pretty confident in this tank's ability to dominate battlefields. Japan, on the uh, air tech tree... Gets a significantly older technology unlock, and that is the Ki-32 bomber at 1.3 battle rating, which you can see right here. And uh, we'll see what kind of performance it's got in a completely stock configuration. It gets 950 kilo bombs, which isn't terrible for a brand new, very low battle rating. It actually gets a offensive, one offensive 7.7 .7 machine gun. Doesn't have a whole lot of ammo, but I mean, for a bomber, that's not too bad. The gear does not raise. It's fixed down. And, I mean, you're not expecting... Not, don't go in expecting an awful lot of uh, speed and aircraft performance and maneuverability in this thing. I mean, you'll be able to use it to defend yourself with the frontal machine gun, but I wouldn't exactly advise going chasing after too many enemy fighters with it. It's not going to be a terrible airplane, honestly. It's not too bad. 
does have an internal bomb bay. So there's your nine bombs for it. Let's go uh, give these trucks a little surprise here. Actually missed one. Let's see if the... Uh... Hey, you can do a touch and go if you come in too low. You won't break your prop because you've got your gear permanently down. But anyway, there you go. There's the KI-32. It's a interesting little bomber. Um, it should be an interesting plane to fly, but I wouldn't expect to survive too many enemy fighter encounters in it. But uh, we'll see what happens. And there you have it for Japan. Japan gets an absolutely fantastic new tank and a new bomber. And uh, Italy in 1.79... Still doesn't get any tanks. Wah, wah, wah. Or should I say, Mamma Mia. Italy does get a couple new airplanes, though. One of them's even Italian, which is the RE 2000 GA. What a little bulldog looking airplane this thing is. <laughs> Let's see what it's got. This thing probably won't take very long to spade out. As most low tier little fighters don't, honestly. It accelerates pretty well, actually. The landing gear takes its time coming up, but that's pretty standard for uh, this time period. Not a lot of real power into the gear retraction or extension mechanisms. Do we... There we go. We've got a ground vehicle target to shoot at. Let's see. Let's see what these machine guns sound like. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Not bad. Not bad at all. There are machine guns, engine overheats real quickly. A little out of range, I knew it was. Actually, it should be okay now, though. There we go. This should actually be a pretty fun aircraft to take into some dogfights. It should be really maneuverable, and the machine guns should actually pack a pretty decent little punch on them. And you got a pretty reasonable amount of ammo. 600 rounds between the two machine guns, that gives you a decent little amount of combat endurance. This thing should actually be kind of fun to go into uh, really low tier air battles with. It's be an interesting little airplane. But there you have it. There's the Reggiane 2000 GA. Low tier new Italian aircraft. And there's one more Italian aircraft, and we'll switch over to that right now. So Italy also gets the Romanian self-produced fighter, which is the IAR-81, which has been a user-built model on the forums for a really long time and is now being added into the actual, actual official game, so congratulations there. Um, it goes under the Italian tree simply because the Germans already have a lot of aircraft and the Italians don't have quite as many. So instead of it matching up with the other Romanian aircraft that we've got under the German tree, they put it with the Italians to beef up the Italian tree. Honestly, I'm not really angry about that decision. I think it made sense when they said why they did it. At least they had a reason for doing it. So we've got a pair of machine guns, really rapid fire, and a pair of 20 mil cannons, which... The machine guns have got an insane amount of ammunition. The cannons have got a pretty good amount of ammunition. And it's actually got a pretty decent little bit of um, ground attack ordnance options it can get as well. So we'll uh, do a quick flight here with the without any ground attack ammo hung on it. And then we'll add some ground attack ammo on board and uh, do that as well. All right, I couldn't quite get airborne. 
before the plane kept rearm re uh, yeah, rearming. Alright, so let's check out the flight model in a clean configuration. At least for takeoff and a little bit of low speed maneuvers. I'm not going to really get it up to too high of an altitude. Just because I don't want to take too long. But uh, yeah, that's a very slow gear raise. Which again is not really, it's not uncommon at all for this time period of aircraft. It does pretty much go completely cleanly up and almost completely contained up into the uh, aircraft, but not too bad. It's got an interesting fuselage shape. It looks very much like a stretched out Brewster Buffalo from this angle right here with really longer wings. It's kind of funny. It doesn't really look like it from this angle, but when you swing it around to this angle, the uh, it really starts looking like a buffalo. Well, the engine's going to get hot real quick, and this is a premium, so... That's... Not, uh, not great. Um, doesn't look like a whole lot of engine power for climbing. You're probably going to have to wep to get up to altitude quickly in this. But the maneuverability looks like it should be decent. The wings are pretty long, so it should be able to pull around in turns pretty quickly. We'll uh, make a quick diving run here, see what the guns look like. Not bad. Pretty accurate, a little bit of a drop. But we'll uh, go make a diving attack on this uh, truck over here, and then we'll switch over and uh, take up the air, the best possible air to ground ordnance loadout I can have, and then we'll uh, I'll throw that at the end of the IAR 81's part of the video. Coming up in just a moment. It's a pretty good rate of fire on the machine gun. You're going to be able to put some pretty good fire into people with uh, all four guns firing. Honestly, either the cannons or the machine guns, they've, both, they've all got a pretty good rate of fire. And when you put all four guns firing together into an enemy target, you're probably going to do some damage pretty quickly. It's actually not bad. Pretty good before they burn out, too. Okay. I'm going to switch over to the air-to-ground loadout, and we'll see what this thing looks like and how badly uh, the drag is. Well, let's get her airborne. Yeah, it's a little bit slower. That really shouldn't be surprising. It's a pretty decent bomb and a decent set of rockets. It's obviously not going to be the, your probably your number one choice for a ground attacker, but as far as the Italians go, it doesn't seem too bad. The rockets are a pretty good bomber attack weapon for sure. Definitely. Yeah, the, the drag penalty is pretty significant, I would say. But, uh, probably worth bringing if you're gonna use this thing for Italian tanks eventually. Someday we'll get Italian tanks. All right. Let's see what kind of a uh, drop in velocity we've got on the rockets here. I'm gonna try and bring her in pretty close. All right, here we go. Not too bad. And the bomba away. Uh, okay. Oh, it's uh, okay. This, that's right, I forgot. The bomb is on the retractable carriage thing, so you're going to have to time your bomb release about a second earlier than you ordinarily would because 
the bomb has to drop down and uh, drop down on the little carriage thing that it's riding on to clear the propeller in a dive if you were dive bombing. So we'll uh, let the bomb reload and then we'll drop it from the side so you can see what I'm talking about with the carriage drop in case you don't know what that means. And then we'll move on to the next nation. And hope that someday we do get tanks and that we'll be able to use this thing in tank battles for Italy. Alright, so with the bomb, I'm going to press it right now. And there you go. You see it's got to swing forward, swing downwards before it drops. And that's so if you were in a straight down dive, it clears the propeller before it drops because it would fall faster than your aircraft is diving. Anyway, uh, let's uh, go back inside the cockpit here and we'll listen to the guns and the rocket launches from inside the cockpit just to see if they sound particularly different. Machine guns, cannons, and the rocket. Uh... Oh, they bounced the aircraft a little bit. That's actually interesting. The rockets kind of made the airplane shudder. It's got an interesting uh, canopy model, or a cockpit model, too. Very nice, I like. Buongiorno. A little far out on the uh, ground vehicle, I know, but uh, what the heck. Arrivederci, my friend. I don't know anything in Romanian, so we're sticking with Italian because this is under the Italian tree. Okay. One more bomba. And uh, that's it. I'll try to actually hit one of these houses with it. I think that worked. <laughs> All right. On to the next nation. All right, France gets themselves a new main battle tank that most importantly has a stabilizer on it. Oh God, how I have waited for a French tank with a stabilizer. It's the AMX-40, which was a tank intended for export that never really found a customer, so there's not a lot of historical data on it besides the prototypes and the program for it. But um, yeah, this is uh, one I'm looking forward to getting and have been looking forward to getting ever since I started driving the AMX-30s. So it's a compact little tank. I was going to say squat, but it's, it's a compact little tank. I'll take a quick look at the X-Ray. So, ammo in the turret bustle, ammo next to the driver, pretty standard configurations for the ammo there. Still has the coax 20 mil, which is very nice. It's got a remote control machine gun on the roof. Um, there's not a lot of place for you to take hits and not suffer some damage or something. That's one of the drawbacks of a small little tank, but it should be pretty decently quick. It should also be uh, pretty decently dangerous. It's got a 120 millimeter gun, which... The stock heat FS rounds have 600 millimeters of penetration on them. Chemical weapon, not too bad. And there is an AP FSDS upgrade all the way at the bottom of the tank. Or bottom of the modification tree, I mean. And uh, that goes all the way at uh, 510 pen millimeters of penetration at 2 kilometers. So that's a pretty good AP FSDS round. It's a 120 millimeter round, so that should be pretty effective. Okay, that's 700 meters away, and I'm aiming at 800, and it fired underneath it. There we go. So, actually, not too bad for hitting the ERA panels there. Not too bad of a heat round. And let's see what the speed is like, and let's see what the stabilizer is like. So speed is all right. It's a little less than I thought it was going to be for maximum speed, but it's not too bad. That's relatively average for uh, this battle rating. It's not going to be that bad, really. 
Um, and let's see how the stabilizer is. We'll target our friend, the ZSU-23-4. And the stabilizer looks beautiful. Have a hull break, my frere. Mon frere. Mon ami. And as for you, my friend, this might be a fun tank. Slightly lesser top speed than some of its contemporaries, but the gun isn't bad at all. Right in the cannon barrel again. <laughs> if I had a nickel for every time I've gotten that hit on someone. That's funny. Huh. Wow. I didn't expect that to deflect. I actually thought that was going to blow up and uh, go right down the front, but I guess the angle I was shooting at. Anyway, the APFSDS round for this looks like it'll be extremely dangerous. The heat FS round, by the way, it's a heat FS round, not the other heat spin stabilized rounds that the Amex 30s have, so it's your standard, more standard heat FS round that the other nations all have for their heat rounds at higher tiers, so for whatever difference that makes. It uh, looks like it'll still be a serviceable round. Uh, you'll have a little bit of trouble with explosive reactive armor tanks until you can get the APF SDS upgrade, but other than that, the 120 millimeter gun should be pretty darn effective and uh, should be a very welcome upgrade for the people who like driving their high tier French tanks. Like me. Oh, let's check the reverse speed, almost forgot. Reverse speed, no cruise control. Uh, not too bad. Uh, again, a little bit below its contemporaries in the reverse speed. Particularly when you compare it to like the Leopards or the Abrams. But the uh, 16 miles an hour will be fast enough to get you out of too much trouble. And let's just see what that old 20 mil cannon sounds like with the new sounds, if it sounds any different at all. Nah, the 20 mil cannon sounds the same, but it's still nice to have the 20 mil cannon all the same. Just the same. I don't care if it sounds new or not. It's nice to have it still. <laughs> yeah, I think the AMX-40 is going to be fun to drive. This will be a pleasant little, pleasant little surprise upgrade for uh, French tankers. France gets a, an upgrade, a new bomber, which is the Leo 451 Late, which comes in right behind the Leo 451 Early, shockingly enough. So there you see it. I am not going to mess around with doing a uh, test flight. We'll get it airborne, and then we'll just move on to the next one. France has got a few aircraft, so in the interest of trying to shorten this video down slightly, I'm going to uh, not extend out the test flights any further than I really need to. So let's go. Airborne, that is one brave gunner sitting down in the little retractable gun pod on takeoff. Not sure I would recommend that. But uh, let's see how the uh, initial bomb bay looks. So as you can see, there's multiple bomb bays. Those bigger ones obviously are empty until you get some upgrades for it. And the initial bomb load is kind of entertaining. 16 little bombs that Oh, that would have been cool if those kept on falling right through the camera there, but alas. Anyway, not too bad of a uh, initial bomb load. It'll be decent for uh, tank battles, but there you go. There's uh, the first new French aircraft. France also gets uh, a unique to them so far version of the Corsair, which is the F4U7, which, as you can see, also has 
quite a decent ultimate rocket load. This is not stock. I unlocked these rockets. It's got uh, four 20 mil cannons and then quite a lot of rockets on board, which I'll uh, demonstrate the fairings blowing off again. And then we'll just hold down the uh, rocket salvo button here and we'll let it reload real quick. That is going to be so much fun and so useful in tank battles. I cannot wait. So let those reload quick and then we'll take off and just spam them all off in the air and make a rocket run. Alright, let's take this baby airborne. Also, interestingly, well, I mean, not interestingly, but something else to remember is that this is a carrier-based aircraft. So you can actually bring put it down on carriers if you ever have the opportunity to land on one. So, something else for those battles where you actually have a carrier and you're playing as France. Now, these rockets look like they're going to be pretty accurate because they're pretty high velocity. So let's bring her about and try to line up on our friend the uh, truck over there and we'll spam all the rockets at him. So here we go, rockets away. Interesting. Okay, those are tilted upwards. Which I... Yeah, I didn't realize how far upwards they're tilted. Okay, so that's going to be something to keep in mind. Those rockets are massively tilted upwards. So, which actually will give you a longer engagement range on them, but you'll just have to find the sweet spot of where your aim point matches the impact. I didn't actually notice that until I uh, started firing and they all went really high, so probably... Around more around two kilometers out, I'd say probably be a better time to uh, fire at them. So we'll uh, fast forward ahead a little bit to when the rockets reload, and we'll try it again from a farther distance and see when the rockets actually match up to the impact when the arc matches the aim point. That's a very interesting uh, quirk to the F4U7, I would say. All right, get these babies reloaded and we'll roll back in on one target. Okay, so we got them reloaded. We'll line it up here on uh, two and a half kilometers out and about. Boy, those are high. Oh man, they're way high. Very interesting, very, very interesting indeed. Of course, if you roll upside down, you can fire them at a shorter range, so. Anyway, the French get the F4U7, which can get one heck of a lot of SNEB rockets, and that should be an awfully fun ground attack and uh, formation disrupting air-to-air -air loadout. So, look forward to that one as well, folks. So France's final new aircraft, with interesting, interestingly painted wingtip fuel tanks, is an F-84G, which is the F-84G 26RE1. The uh, other nations who have the F-84G have the 21 or 28, I think, I forget exactly, but uh, it's a very similar F-84G, which is slightly, it's gonna be slightly different. The uh, ultimate, Air to ground load is two Tiny Tims and 24 HVARs, so I didn't bother to bring it along. But let's see what kind of a takeoff run we get here with France's new F-84G. This is a totally stock aircraft. I did not unlock any Golden Eagle research mods with it, so. What you see here is what you get here. It's a little slow on the acceleration, that's for sure, but I'm sure once it gets up to speed, it'll probably be decent. Hey, 
Hey, at least the gear comes up quickly, right? And let's check out those new gun sounds, shall we? Very nice. Very nice. Very nice indeed. It's uh, having a little trouble coming around hard in a turn, but it's not doing too badly. Oh, what are we doing here, airplane? There we go. Took her a second to level out right. All right, we'll get, make a quick scraping run on the uh, truck up ahead, and then that should do it for this video. There we go. Stock M3 50 cal ammo is sufficient to destroy completely unarmored vehicles, in case anybody was wondering. All right, everybody, I want to thank you all for watching this 1.79 dev server preview YouTube video. And I look forward to bringing you some 1.79 dev server actual live battle videos, hopefully, following up this one, maybe later this week. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Everybody have a great day. And thank you for stopping by and checking this out.